preach this evening to the book of 2 Corinthians. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter number 15. Now, this is not hard for Baptist folk, and when you found your place there, you go to the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter number 4. We come to the final line of uh, Jubilee from as preachers, and I've been coming here for a number of years, and I think this is one of the best. I say that every year, but it gets better all the time. The older you get, the better things the Lord gets, you know. And I do appreciate, I do appreciate this church, and I appreciate the burden and the vision. I appreciate that message while I go, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. We can believe in Christ. Preacher, good preaching, Holy Ghost unction preaching. That's what I call that kind of preaching. Yeah. I like it. I love it. Yeah. I want to thank the pastor for allowing me to stay in the home here in Sister Valerie. Yeah. They have treated me with royalty. Amen. Sister Valerie has fixed my meals up there. And and I call it the Crane Hotel. <laughs> I call it a plantation. Thank y'all for having me in your home. It's been my joy and privilege there. And I certainly want to thank the pastor, Dr. Crane, for inviting me to come back again this year to preach. And I enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank you folks for coming to the Jubilee. If folk could ever get a hold of what's going on, Amen. you'd enjoy it a lot better. Amen. Now, I want, I want to thank you for the good singing people. Dear God, I'll tell you. I think you're the best of the best. That sounds like Bill Gator, doesn't it? <laughs> but you are. I like when y'all got together while we go in that choir. Amen. Amen. The only thing about you should have sung my song, Amazing Grace. Mm -hmm. You did that for me at the fellowship hall. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Then I want to thank you for all the preachers. They've done a good job preaching this week. I think every preacher's been on target. Uh, I just want to thank you for that. And uh, then I want to uh, thank the church here for supporting our ministry. God bless you for your faithfulness down through the years, prayerfully and financially. God bless you for that. Pastor and church, I want to thank you for that. Thank you for the offering. You're always good to this evangelist, and God bless you for it. And I want to thank uh, Brother Don. He's he done a good job over there in the kitchen in that crew, have they not? Amen. I think we ought to give them a hand. <laughs> we never know what goes on behind the scenes. But they worked hard to fix us, and I do appreciate that. And so I'm looking forward to getting back next year if the Lord stays is coming, and, and uh, I'm able to get here. I'm looking forward to coming back. Amen. Um, you pray for our schedule. Uh, I leave you in the morning. I'm not used to riding airplanes. We travel by motor coach. In just two or three years, I've been coming down my plane, and it's a lot easier on since my wife's not coming with me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have uh, two days off in July, and then no more until we get to Christmas time. Mm -hmm. So that's you pray for us as we travel for our Lord. It's certainly a joy to show the Lord. This little boy was playing church, and he had a cat sitting in the chair preaching to that cat. And so his mom was paying the house. She looked out the window and she's so proud of little Johnny because he's out there preaching to that cat playing in church. She went about a housework and after a while she heard a terrible hissing noise. She went back to the same window and looked out and Johnny tried to baptize that cat. <laughs> <laughs> And she says, Johnny, don't you know cats don't like water? Said, but he thought about that. He should have thought about that before he joined my church. 
I thought this evening, and I promised the Lord, and I thought this evening, well, I preach on the second coming of Christ. And I promised the Lord the first of the year that I would preach more on the coming of Christ than ever by His grace. Amen. Amen. If you could have would, please, would you stand with me this evening in honor to the reading of the Word of God and prayer time. We're looking here in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter number 15, beginning at verses number 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and it is to be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. <laughs> For this corrupter must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corrupter shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now in the book of First Thessalonians, chapter number four, I begin at verses number thirteen. But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also we sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we said to you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout of the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in there, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words, My Father, in Jesus' name, again, thank you for Calvary. Thank you for the blood that was shed to wash away our sins. Thank you that we're able again to congregate together in your meeting house, in your church, and worship you in spirit and in truth. Now, Father, I pray that you bless our waiting congregation. Lord, I pray for our preachers and pastors and missionaries and evangelists. And Brother Steve and Sister Val, Lord, you help him as in the shepherds this church. Thank you for today being the anniversary of yes. all these years together. To God be the glory. Bless the minister of these young people across this country singing yes. and give them safety as they travel. Yes. Yes. And again, thank you for this day you've made for us and give glory to yourself. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. You may be seated and thank you. <laughs> Standing in honor to the reading of the Word of God. Again, it's been my joy to work on the same platform with my dear friend, Dr. Bale. I appreciate the love of the Sister Bell there, my precious dear friends of many years. I thought about this evening when I was studying for the message and getting and making preparation. I just read to you what Paul said to the church at Corinth Amen. and the church at Thessalonica. And I don't know about you, but I believe in the soon return of our Lord. Amen. And I know of no scripture that has to be fulfilled Amen. prior to his coming as we are already there. That's right. And I want to preach on this thought this evening when the trumpets fade. Now back in uh, olden days gone by, they talked about the end of time. You hardly hear that anymore. That will put the fear in the heart of people. 
Now, there was a lot of fables when I was growing up. My mom and dad, I believe I told that in this church, but I'll tell it again to see, because it goes along with the message I'm going to preach. My mother had told me often, not only me, but my brothers and my sister, before the end of time, you would see golden letters in the sky. I believe my mother. And my dad was sick, and I was about 10 years old. And uh, all of our arms and the hogs were across the creek, and so we were over going to feed the stock and milk the cows. And I looked up in the sky, and I said, Mama, the end of time is coming. There's golden letters in the sky. And almost all of them had faded out. And I remember some of them, like a P and a E and so forth. And my mother put their milk books down, went back to the house. My daddy's name was Sandy. She said, Sandy, the end of time is coming. We have seen golden letters in the sky. And my daddy said, go across the hollow. Do you know what a holler is? <laughs> if you don't, I'll pay you after service. <laughs> and said, and invite the neighbors to come with and we'll wait for the end of time tonight. And I went and delivered that message and our neighbors came and all night we sat up and waited for the end to come, but it didn't come. And my daddy, he got well and was going to visit my grandpa on my mother's side. And I looked out the window and I seen those golden letters again. But this time I could read it was an airplane riding Pepsi Cola in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, if a fable like that can put a fear in your heart, what about the Bible truth? Amen. Seem like that people don't have a fear in the heart of the Lord. And well, let me give the introduction very quickly here. These verses that we have just listened to give us a little insight into the future known as a rapture. Now, while this word itself does not appear in the Bible, the event is real. The rapture is a future event when the Lord Jesus himself will return in the clouds above this earth and will catch away all the saved people of the world. There's a time that is known in the Bible as a blessed hope of the believer. In the book here of Titus chapter 2, verses number 13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. A return of our Lord is spoken of many times in the New Testament. There's only three passages that deal with the rapture in any detail, and I've read two of them. Now, we find the others found in the book of the Revelation chapter 4 and verses 1 and the first part of verses number 2. After this, I looked, and behold, the door was open in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I'll show thee things which must be hereafter, and immediately I was in the spirit. So I want to draw our attention to one common theme that each of these verses that gives reference to. And so that common theme is the mention of the trumpet. Now we're told in clear language that the rapture will be a time that will be heard over the sound of trumpets. Now, when the writers of the New Testament used the trumpets of people to whom they were writing were well acquainted with what they were saying. Now, we modern readers need to be educated about the importance of the trumpet in the Bible. Trumpets were used for four, listen, for four specific purposes. Number one, proclaim a victory. Number two, to call an assembly. Then number three, to announce a warning. And then number four, to call the troops to battle. So it is clear to see how trumpets fit with the idea of the rapture. All four of these events will take place when the rapture comes about. Number one, victory of the church will be announced by the church. The saints will be called to assemble themselves in the presence of the Lord. 
The trumpets will announce a warning of judgment to the world. The angelic truth will be summoned to battle. Also in the society of that day, trumpets were heard on a daily basis. So we find the Roman army, which occupied most of the civilized world at that time, used trumpets to carry out the movement of their troops. Typically, when a Roman legion moved, there would be three blasts from the trumpets. The first would tell the troops to strike their tents and to prepare to move. Did you realize that we're living in a tent? And someday soon, God's going to tell us to strike our tents. It's time to move out of this old wicked world. Amen. And then again, it tells us the second will alert them to fall and line up. If that's every time that the church needs to line up, it's now. Yes. We need to line up now. Yes. Then the last trouble would be the sign to move out. Now, notice uh, what Paul says in the book of 1 Corinthians 15, 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. He tells us that we're living at the, listen, that we're living at the last trump. Now, when the trumpet sounds, it will be the signal to move up the glory. Folks, the trumpet sound. Listen, when the trumpet sounds, all of those who are saved by grace is going to be leaving this whole world right here. Yeah. So it is that event that I want to preach about this evening. I want, I want you to know that before the sound of the trumpet blast fades from our ears, that several great precious events is going to take place. Allow me to share them with you. <clears throat> First of all, our Lord will have returned. In the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verses number 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now get this. The Bible tells us number one in fulfillment of his promise. Before the Lord Jesus went to the cross, he promised his disciples that he would return for them one day. I used these verses last night, and I want to use it again this evening. He says here in John 14, in the first three verses, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. Now get this false. I will come again receiving to myself that where I am, that you may be also. This is the promise of our Savior. He said, I'm coming back again. I'm going to stand on God's promises. How about you? Amen. Then again, he later reaffirmed this promise to the Apostle John. Again, in the book of the Revelation, the Bible says here, chapter 22, verse 20, he which testify of these things, says, Surely I come quick, amen, even so come Lord Jesus. John knew what it was to be persecuted. John knew what it was to be bought in all. And when he heard about the news, of the coming of the Lord, he said, he was so come on Jesus. Amen. I try to pray every day, just like John did. <clears throat> he was so come Lord Jesus. Not to take me away from my responsibility because I'm homesick. Amen. I'm sick of this world. I'm looking for my new home Amen. on the other side. Amen. Just as sure as there is a blue sky above us, he will return as he has promised. Let me say, the Bible tells us he was ascending back into heaven. So the angelic master here with dispatch to tell the apostles 
of the Lord's impending return. In Acts chapter 1 and verses 9 through 11, and when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white of pearl. Which also said, You men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus. Amen. Not an imposter. Amen. But as you have seen him go away, he's going to return in like manner. Amen. The first time he came, he came to die for sinners like you and I. He came to die on an old rugged cross. But when he comes the next time, he's not coming back to the earth. He's coming in the clouds. Yeah. He's going to call his church out to meet him. Those, and the church is those who have been washed in the blood of the Lamb Amen. But not an imposter, but the same Jesus. He said, also, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go to heaven. So heaven has been silent. But one day God is going to break that silence with a sound of the trumpet. Amen. Jesus is coming. Amen. He's going to come. Then again, the Bible said, number two, in fulfillment of his purpose. While the Lord was making his promise for return someday, he also stated his purpose here in John 14, 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, Oh, I'll tell you, this is shouting right now. Amen. And if I go and prepare a place for it, I will come again. Amen. Amen. But not only am I going to come again, but I'm going to receive you unto myself. Amen. That where Amen. I am, Amen. there you may be also. Amen. 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 If that don't help you, your wood's wet, yes. your crank is broke. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. I'm looking for him to come. How about you? Then we find also the Lord's desire to receive his pride unto himself. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, 25 through 27, Husbands love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that you might sanctify and cleanse with the washing of the water by the word, that you might present to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy. And without blemish. The pastor and I, this year, was sitting in his living room talking about the return of our Lord. And I said, let me give you my idea of how it's going to happen. How things are going to happen in glory. That will take a moment. Now, this is Noah preaching. I'm not getting, it's not the Bible. This is Noah preaching. I believe, I believe, when the church gets home, and I believe that we're going to hear the angels sing. And I don't know how long they're going to sing, but they'll sing for quite a while, I'm sure. But we're going to say, we have never heard nothing like that. When they finally sit down, I can see the Lord in my mind bow before God Almighty throne. And he'll say to the Father, I will present my church to you without spot or wrinkle. Amen. Amen. And I believe we'll stand there and he'll lead us in that great song of amazing grace. How sweet this fact that shaped the red heart. Amen. 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 Now that's my version of it. It's good preaching anyway. <laughs> but one day, the church will be without spot or wrinkle. Amen. And then again, the Bible said, number two, all departed saints will have been, re listen, have been resurrected. The Bible says in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and verses 13 through 16, but I will not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, do you believe that? Amen. Even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we shall you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout of the voice of the archangel, 
and with a trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now in 1 Corinthians 15, 52, for this the rubber must put on interruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Then number two, you think about there, a condition. In the book of 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 tells us that those saints who have departed are asleep. This does not refer to soul sleep. It refers to the fact that their bodies are asleep. When a saint of God leaves his world, they are being ushered into the very presence of the Lord. Amen. Now, this was the conviction of the great apostle Paul in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 8. We are confident, I say, and willing whether to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Amen. Again, the Bible says, Philippians 1, 23, For I'm in a straight retreat, too, having a desire to depart, and to be with Christ, which is far better. Now, presently, all of those who left this world in a safe condition are in the very presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the question may arise as to what manner of body that they possess. Now, certainly, they do not have that their glorified bodies yet. However, it was seen that they possessed some sort of a spiritual body. When Moses and Elijah appeared with Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration, they possessed bodies that could be seen and recognized. In Matthew 17, and behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Whatever form they're in, they're certainly in a place. They are free from all pain and burdens of this world. That's got to be wonderful to just stand in the presence of God where there is no burdens to carry and no pain to bear. Again, the Bible tells us it's very clear when it teaches us that nothing that the finest shall enter into heaven. A man came to me one night and he said, I've been married four times. When we get to heaven, which one's going to be my wife? I said, neither one of them. Well, guess what? We can preach like that. Because no flesh and blood should inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. We'll not be known to the flesh, but Hebrews said known as we're known in spiritual bodies, in spiritual attitude. Now I must go on. The Bible says again now, Revelation 21, 27, and there shall no wise enter into anything that defileth, neither whatsoever work the violation, or make the life of they which are written in the land for the life. Then I want you to know some promise completion you now. I like that message in him we're complete. First Corinthians 15, 52. In a moment, and the twinkling of an eye. At the last from the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised into rubble, and we shall be changed. Now this tells us that the part of saints will be raised into rubble. That is, they'll be changed. When they left their body, it was this time or the ground from which he came. However, when the Lord Jesus returned, he'll bring those spirits back with him. And he will raise their bodies and glorify them. He will then place his spirits back into those newly glorified bodies. You said, how in this world is that going to happen? I don't know. I just preach what I know about it. But it doesn't take God 25 years to do something. Now get this. He took dust and formed man and breathed into his nostrils. He became a living soul. If God did it one time, he can do it again. Amen. And listen. Maybe in a fire or a cremation, maybe it's just ashes, maybe even buried at sea. But God knows where they are. Mm -hmm. And there'd be no problem in to put it all back together Amen. when that happens. <laughs> now that's going to get exciting, ladies and gentlemen. Now I'm not a hyper canvas, but let me share something with you. There's over 7 million people on this earth. And God said, every hair in your head is numbered, and I know every time one falls. 
There is not one of us identical. Yet it's every grain of sand in the sea. And out of the sea, God knows what side he laid on today. The scientists that cannot count the stars, but God knows them by name. Yeah. Are you with me? They say, I'm talking Amen. about God. Amen. I'm not talking about Baptists. I'm talking about God. Yes. Amen. God knows all this. Yes. God, it would be no trouble for him to put all this back when he comes. Yeah. But now, let me go on. The Bible tells us, if you take time to look back at the times that our Lord shouted while he was on this earth, you'll discover that each time he did so, dead folk got out of the grave. Amen. When they hear the shout of Jesus, the grave can't hold them. Yes. Yes. They crucified Jesus and sealed him off and placed soldiers there, but death could not hold him. Amen. They came down that third morning and thank God when they walked in that tomb. Thank God that they found nobody. Amen. I like that song, the tomb is empty now. Amen. How about you? Yeah. Yeah. Now the Bible tells us very quickly. Uh, he shouted in Bethany. Lazarus has been dead four days. He got up from the dead. Do you yeah. believe that? Yes. I do. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Number two, he shouted in Calvary. The dead got up and walked around. Mm -hmm. Every time God shouts, something's going to happen. Amen. And then also, he shouted from the clouds, and all the party saints will live. That shout God. Number three, all the saints will have been raptured. First Thessalonians chapter 4, 17, then we were to alive remain to be caught together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in there, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, 1 Corinthians 15, 51, 52, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, and the twinkle of eye, and the last trumpet, the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised into a rubber, and we shall be changed. First of all, you, the church, will leave instantaneously. Now, I want you to notice the use of the words that imply speed and swiftness. Mm -hmm. And the book of 1 Corinthians 15, 15, 52 talks about a moment. The word speaks of an individual, a point in time, a span of time, so short that there is none shorter than a twinkle of an eye. Now, the scientist has determined that the blink of an eye is one third of a second of enduration. But then also, the scientist says, that light, is, listen, that light traveling to a planet Earth at 186,000 miles per second takes four years to reach planet Earth. But when the trumpet sounds, Come on. Amen. when the trumpet Hallelujah. sounds, Amen. when the trumpet sounds, Amen. we're going to move out of here faster Amen. than light. Amen. What about that? Amen. All those astronauts in those capsules going through the moon will pass all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. God does nothing halfway. Right. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? So we find in the book of 1 Thessalonians 4 17, Paul used a term called a, this phrase means to snatch away, to seize with a force, or to claim. For one step. It refers to a sudden event when the saints of God will be snatched from this world with force and claim for the glory of God. Now again, Rob, the whole idea is one of speed. There will be no forewarning. It won't be on your TV. I'm warning you tonight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm God's man tonight. I'm, not, I'm God's mouthpiece tonight. I'm sending you a warning tonight. Amen. Jesus is coming. Amen. It will not be announced on TV. It won't be announced on the radio. It won't be announced in your newspaper. There won't be time to put it in there. But I'm going to warn you tonight about the Bible of the Lord of God, God's signature. He's coming. Yes. He's going to come sitting before we heard all this warning. You see, again, there will be no announcement from the poor pitch. God, listen. When he comes, he's coming. That's what we preachers are doing now. We're giving you an announcement from the pulpit now. He's coming. 
And if you're not ready, you better get ready tonight. Amen. It could happen in a moment. <clears throat> then again, let me say, ladies and gentlemen, you need to hear this here in the book of Matthew 24, 44. Therefore be also ready for such an hour as you think not the Son of Man. Notice now. Cometh. How many do you know that's really looking for the soon coming of the Lord? They talk about it. They sing about it. Are you really looking for it? Are you really looking for it? Can you imagine the chaos that would come when this event takes place? Now, I know what some say. there will be a secret thing. And nobody will know nothing about it. I certainly believe there'll be babies missing. Tell yeah, that child, we should be counting them in to thank God for the atoning blood of Christ. Mm -hmm. That blood atones for that child to the age of accountability. Amen. People are born with Down syndrome, the blood atones for them. Amen. Are you with us, old preacher, tonight? Yeah, man. Yeah. Amen. But before the trumpet fades, mm -hmm. there'll be babies missing. The church will be missing it. We'll be gone. Amen. We will be gone. Airplanes will fall out of the sky. Right. Trains will run off the tracks. Right. The semi trucks and motor homes and cars go down the highway without a driver. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There'll be a lot of steel on the highway. Right. Don't tell me there won't be people who know something happened on this world. Yeah. Where all that event takes place. But then I want you to know this very quickly. The church will leave intact. God will not leave not one of his children behind. Amen. There are some that I believe that are saved and they're not faithful to God. If in my eye, they shouldn't go to heaven, but they're going to go because they've been saved. <laughs> and I'm not the judge. I don't know who's saved and who's not saved. But if they've been born again, God's not going to leave you behind. Amen. He's going to keep the church intact. Then the last time you know, all the saints will have been reconstructed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Bible says in the book of 1 Peter 15, 52 through 57, in a moment with them and I, and the last trumpet, the trumpet shall sound, and it shall be raised in corruption, and we shall be changed. For well, this corrupt must burn in corruption, and this water shall, listen, must burn in mortality. So then, this corruption shall have put on him corruption. This water shall have put on him more time. Then she be brought to pass the shame that is written. Then they swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy shame? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us a victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Then we'll be changed physically. At the moment of the rapture, all those saints will experience a radical change. Now, these mortal bodies will be changed to immortal ones. These bodies, at the best time, the perish will be made like the body of our Lord. A body that cannot experience death. A body that will not decay. A body that will not disease. A body that will shine the brilliance of 10,000 suns. What a day that will be. Amen. And then the Bible said we'll be changed perfectly. This change comes, it will make us into the image of our glorified Lord. Hey. In the book of 1 John chapter 3, verse number 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Hey. Notice this. When he comes, he's going to give us our Lord's going to give us our bodies just like his. It will be a body not bound by time or space. You'll find that in John 20. There's a body that can enjoy food and fellowship. I'll eat all the red velvet cake I want, Sister Valerie, and never worry about gaining one ounce. I can eat anything I want to and not worry about cholesterol or triglycerides, whatever that is. Can you imagine having a body never have to go on a diet again? Amen. Amen. <laughs> you sit down, Lord, when you read your Bible, Luke 24. Then against the body, 
that can never die. Paul, Hebrews 7, whatever, he'll give us a body that will never die. Hey. Then I want you to know it's going to be a body that shines with a heavenly brilliance. All of this is enough to make me know that I want one of these bodies. Amen. I'm looking for one of these bodies. And I'm looking soon to cross my river on the other side. Amen. Amen. It would be a lot better there than it has ever been here. Amen. Then that, the Bible said we'll be changed permanently. And then I want you to notice number five again, I'm through. All saints will be enjoying a reunion. A reunion. The Bible says in the book of 1 Thessalonians 4 7, then we which are alive and remain should be called up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. We'll be with our loved ones. Notice the phrase together with him in the clouds. And this, this indicates that all the children of God are. We'll be together forever in heaven. Amen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in my lifetime, I have buried three congregations. Mm. I've pastored 42 years. Evangelism working on 21 years now. I have buried three congregations. Mm. All of my family, even family, my brothers, my mom and dad, and my sister, they're in heaven. My wife and I have a daughter over there. Not count other kinfolk, not count people I've pastored. That's got to be a reunion one day. We're going to get together, brother. We'll die and separate from more. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I traveled to the state of Vermont for 24 years from my house to St. John, Vermont, a thousand miles. And you travel over some of the roughest road in North Country. I went there when I was a pastor in evangelism. We have a built church in the northern part of Vermont. And then four years ago, the Lord laid in my heart to bring my meetings close to home. And, and so I canceled out of there. I hadn't seen some of my friends in four years. <clears throat> Make a point here. One of the preachers I preached for had moved away. He left the church, went to Minnesota. We've become dear friends now through years. And we had been together in four years. My grandson was having a jubilee. He canceled that and I didn't book that week. I said to my wife, let's go back to Vermont one more time. I might get a roaster here and read our friends one more time on this side. Yeah. She said, all right. I called my friend in Minnesota and I said, I know you're 1,600 miles away. Is it possible that we all meet in St. John, Vermont one more time? Week before last, that became a reality. <laughs> we all met. Amen. That comfort in. Went to the church I traveled to for 24 years, President Street Baptist Church, passing his wife now legally blind, but this is what blessed my heart. Even though he can't see, he said, I'll not give up my church. I've hit enough word in my heart down through the years. I'll skip on pastoring and preaching. Amen. That's what it's all about. Amen. Amen. But this, when I got home, I wept when my friend sent me a message on. Facebook and said, so long, old friends, what time we had. I don't like that word. But you know what? One day we'll never say that again. Amen. Amen. We'll never say it. In a few moments, I'm going to shake your hand. And how true this is, we may meet again here, or we may not. But you say we'll meet there. Right. When we get to heaven, we'll never use that word again. But you're not only that, not only that, but what about our Lord? Not only will we be our family,
without the priest to Jesus for 65 years. Amen. Amen. See? But one day we will turn through all the valleys and all the heartaches. I want to tell you, it's worth the journey. Amen. It's worth all the burdens and all the heartaches because one day we'll be with him forever and forever. And that's why I believe in the soon return of our Lord. He's going to gather us all together. Would you stand all over the church? Our pastor's going to come. Father, thank you for this.